Welcome to the Knife Junkie Podcast, the place for blade lovers to learn about knives and hear from the makers, manufacturers, and reviewers that make the knife world go round. I'm Bob DeMarco, and coming up from Tempest Knives, the new Microburst prototype, uh, the new Jack Wolf Knives Javelina Jack, and we take a look at 10 great hard work folders. Welcome to the Knife Junkie Podcast, your weekly dose of knife news and information about knives and knife collecting. Here's your host, Bob the Knife Junkie DeMarco. Welcome back to the show. My favorite comment from last week was from Peter Northrup, and he was commenting on my Taipan video. My Taipan close-up video, I talk about how I've wanted that knife for over 20 years, and uh, I did not get it until that moment uh and i was very excited about it and he says i waited 40 years for the real rambo knife by v neely of not of lyle knives 2100 dollars, a work of art he finished it for me in november i love yours sometimes things are worth the wait and i just like hearing that because um that's something i heard a lot growing up uh thing, certain things are worth the wait they're worth saving up money. You know, you're not just always putting things on credit, but you're saving up, saving your shekels for something special. And if it's if you're going to wait for it or if you're going to save for it, you know, it's worth it. And with the Amazon knife buying and all of these online knife purveyors that are awesome and they supply us this amazing service. Well, it's so easy to just buy knives because they look cool. And I know I have a chest full of them. Uh, so I liked this comment because it reminded me, you know, uh, it's good to to wait for things. It's good to save for things. I waited for the right woman and I got her. Uh, so it, things are worth the wait. Uh, I wanted to mention also a runner up comment of the week uh, from my ultra polarizing short, how I carry my EDC fixed blade. And man, it's so funny. I've gotten, well, more views is the most viewed video I've ever done. And I've gotten more um, funny comments. And 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 this one was from SV Sayonara. And SV Sayonara simply says, oh, for heaven's sake, get over yourself. I'm going to leave it right there. Okay, I think it's time now for a pocket check. All right. You know, I'm not capable of that. Uh, this is what I'm carrying in my front right pocket. Uh, this is the Monterey Bay Knives Turbo designed by Peter Carey, one of the classic uh, knife designers of the uh, tactical nearing art knife uh, sort of flipper. I mean, you can you can get one of his custom made knives uh, if you have the if you've saved up and if you wait. Uh, they, it is possible, but you have to go to the right shows. And because uh, Peter Carey kind of, um, he's like Pauly in uh, in Goodfellas. He doesn't have to move for anybody. And and he makes these knives. Uh, oh, man, he, he has a whole bunch of different designs. They all uh, have a similar uh, feel to them. And they all veer uh, from the tactical into the um, sort of fancy. Now, this one, uh, the Monterey Bay Knives uh, version of the Turbo is a liner lock. He does not do frame locks, uh, custom or any of his uh, licensed designs. And this was one of the knives that got me to really like the idea of titanium um, liner locks instead of frame locks, which we see all the time. Uh, ease of flavor, really, 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 my voice just cracked there. It really uh, eases the action to not be fighting that lock bar. And um, the uninterrupted surface here on the clip side really makes for a comfortable carry and a clean look. So I'm really digging the titanium liner locks these days. This beauty here, as you can see, is not off the shelf. This one was modded by our friends Lindy Lou and Richie B over at Knife Modders. I asked for a sort of Statue of Liberty high voltage green and a dark acid wash. They did a beautiful job on that. They asked about the clip and the backspacer. I said, do your finest. And they gave me this cool sort of celestial map. I don't know. I don't know what you call it, but it's uh, if you look real close and if you Windex it, actually, this one's pretty, uh, the clip is pretty 
tarnished at this point, but um, you can see these these uh, clouds that look like celestial clouds. It's pretty cool. They do some cool stuff with anodizing. Uh, this is a great work knife too. They also put a wicked edge on it. And I think they used a wicked edge and uh, recently have been using this more than just looking at it and playing with it, which is what it was for a while. Uh, but I discovered it's a, actually a great knife for cutting things. <laughs> what do you know? Uh, especially cardboard. All right. Uh, next up, uh, I uh, love this one for cutting just about anything. Uh, this is the Jack Wolf Knives Little Bro. Uh, this is the boys knife from the Jack Wolf Knives lineup. And it is the smallest of the knives and um, mimics the size and dimensions and spirit of the Great Eastern Cutlery Number no. 15 boys knife and just the classic boys knife but he of course puts his own spin on it ben belkin uh owner and designer of jack wolf knives knives uh puts his own spin on it and of course this has the beautiful bolsters the in, uh, integrated with the liners of titanium this one has m390 blade steel and a beautiful lock locking action i mean not locking action slip joint action walk and talk uh great micarta handle uh the micarta handles are going away i think uh pretty much on the next run of jack wolf knives because the um the carbon fiber models are just man they are stunning that carbon fiber that he has been putting on these knives absolutely stunning and that's what people are really gravitating towards there might be some micarta fatigue out there uh, we may have hit peak micarta uh but never in my heart and uh so i'm i'm really psyched that i have the uh, this beauty and uh, a bunch of other uh, jackal knives in my carta. Um, this cut a bagel today. That's all this did. You know, that's that's pretty much what I do with my slip joints. They are my ad hoc food knives uh, when I'm not in the kitchen. Next up on my uh, belt in my waistband, I had the Nova One, my collaboration knife with Hogtooth Knives and Matt Chase. Here, that look at that awesome sheath. That sheath is so awesome. He does great sheaths. Uh, that is uh, uh, the main barrier to entry to me as far as uh, fixed blade knives are concerned. If you're making awesome fixed blade knives, you better be making awesome sheaths. Um, and luckily, most of the people I collect and have uh, knives from do, um, this being no exception. Um, but the knife here is the star. This is his platform. That is Matt Chase's platform. That's the size of the knife and the handle. And that is my blade design. Beautifully, beautifully executed uh, on the grinder in 154 CM. That's hollow ground uh, by Matt Chase there. This, of course, is the prototype. There will be a few changes. Uh, you have that maroon linen micarta. That will be the color for this run of knives. Uh, maroon linen micarta however i'm going to change the liners from that red to a cool color like forest green i think is what it's going to be and that one inch run of jimping is not going to be there it is going to move forward towards the uh towards the swedge uh, because that's where i find i put my thumb more and then finally uh the prototype will not it will not say prototype it will have a serial number uh down here and the logo, the Knife Junkie logo will be r much smaller and will fit on the flat and be uh, sort of harmonious with his maker's mark over here on this side. I got to say, and uh, this sounds like I'm tooting my own horn, but I am not. This is just my version. But I mean, is the Bowie knife not just the most graceful, beautiful design? Uh, I love the recurve here. It is not too much to sharpen. Uh, it is not too difficult to sharpen. It's not a deep recurve, but it is uh, giving you a little extra material on that belly where you do most of your work and where you will dull most frequently and where you will end up sharpening through more often. So that little bit extra on the belly, which uh, results in a recurve, is really good for maintaining the overall all profile of the knife over time because you will have it forever and you will use it and pass it down and you want it to still look good uh, for your progeny. Uh, do look for the uh, pre-order. I, I think we've worked through the kinks uh, in, in all of the online commerce uh, end of it. And uh, we do know, uh, uh, we're pretty sure about a number that we can uh, sell of these. So do look for the pre-order. I'm very excited about this sucker. It's going to be 
a butte all handmade in Massachusetts using American materials. Okay, last up for emotional support today. And this is this is not a reflection of my emotional state, uh, but for emotional support, I had on me the Black Talon 2 by Cold Steel. Uh, this is uh, just a, well, you know, look at it. It's menacing and yet beautiful. It is uh, weapony and yet so incredibly utilitarian. And that's because that, unlike the civilian, the blade that this was, let's face it, this was uh, inspired by the Spyderco civilian, uh, that knife has a very small um, forward portion. It has that radical curve down, but there's not much backing it up. So it's it's always recommended not to use it for anything but cutting people's flesh. You don't want to use that as a work knife. This makes an outstanding work knife. If the, you have the serrations, you have the thickness of the blade up here. Uh, you have CPM. Um, this, this here is uh, XHP. And um, now it's S35, but I hear they're going back to XHP. Um, and then you have the serrations. You can also get it without the serrations. But for trapping materials, uh, packing uh, straps, uh, any sort of uh, nylon, any sort of uh, rope or anything, pulling it towards you. I mean, this thing is amazing. Opening boxes, all of that uh, would be my justification if I had to justify this. Oh, it's a great work knife. It's like a tool. It's like a saw. It's a curved saw, you know, <laughs> is how I would put it. Uh, but I just had it on me because uh, it rides in the inside pocket of my winter jacket. And uh, I just had it on me and had it out and was appreciating it today. I uh, didn't use it for anything, thank God, because I didn't have to do hard work um, in any sort of way. But still appreciated it. Look at the size of that thing. A cold steel, man. It's They're undeniably cool. All right, still to come on the Knife Junkie podcast, we're going to take a look at some uh, life, uh, knife life news and then uh, state of the collection. Got some really cool stuff to show off. All right here on the Knife Junkie podcast. If you're a knife junkie, you're always in the market for a new knife. And we've got you covered. For the latest weekly knife deals, be sure to visit the knifejunkie.com slash knives. Through our special affiliate relationships, we bring you weekly knife specials on your favorite knives. Help support the show and save money on a new knife. Shop at theknifejunkie.com slash knives. That's theknifejunkie.com slash knives. You're listening to the Knife Junkie podcast. And now here's the Knife Junkie with the Knife Life News. If you've tuned in at all to Thursday Night Knives, you've heard me um, sadly waxing poetic recently about how I haven't felt too inspired by many folding knives recently. Uh, not that it's the fault of the folding knives, uh, but there hasn't been much to draw my eye, draw my attention away from big fixed blade knives recently. Uh, and this recent uh, release, man, that has changed things. Very exciting. Uh, Kaiser's uh, new collaboration with Adrian D'Souza and Damned Designs. Adrian D'Souza came on the show. He was episode 268. You can go to knifejunkie.com slash 268 to listen to uh, him talk about Damned Designs and the birth and, and growth of Damned Designs. But uh, I saw this on Kaiser's Instagram feed and uh, it, the blade was unopened and I knew. I was like, oh my God. I could tell just from the shape of the handle that it was damn designs. And you know me, I don't always know what's coming out until it comes out. And so I was really excited to see this because it's a button lock, it's a Kaiser. And I know there've been some uh, recent button lock uh, snafus out there, uh, but uh, this one has me very excited um, because it's Adrian D'Souza and it's this beautiful Tonto blade. Look at that, it's a 3.31 inch 154 cm uh, compound blade that straight is hollow ground that forward part uh front of forward of the yakote is uh flat ground it's a button lock and green or black micarta very exciting 4.08 ounces and it's got that uh that signature profile look at that handle man that's that's a thing of beauty i had a, a bunch of these a bunch of his designs here for a while on loan, and it was hard to give them back. So I'm I'm going to get this one. This one you will see on the channel. Uh, so I'm very excited about this one. Okay, next up is from Boker. Uh, we um, 
are excited to see, we, I am excited to see another cool clip point coming out of Boker. They have a lot of cool designs. Sometimes uh, sometimes the, uh, the QC is not all it should be, um, but I, I feel like that's a thing of the past. Um, with with a few recent exceptions, uh, but I love Boker and I have a small uh, and awesome sub collection. Well, take a look at this thing. This is a hard work slip joint from them. Beautiful clip point. This is designed by a French knife maker, Raphael Durant. Uh, this is a 3.43 inches of D2 blade steel. So kind of uh, in their more... Um, uh, a high value lineup. It's got beautiful contour G10 handles. I mean, just looking at it, it looks very comfortable to, to heft. And it's got a special slip joint mechanism that puts constant pressure on the blade for a solid feel. Um, you know, it almost feels like a locking blade is what they say. Uh, so interesting. It's a, it's a, um, a, a style of slip joint mechanism uh, designed by this gentleman, Raphael Durant, and another French knife maker, Samuel Lurk, Lurkin, Lurkin, Lurkin. I don't know how you pronounce that in French, but uh, very interesting. This looks like a cool one. And we had a really cool, um, that other French slip joint that we had on the channel with the, with the big skull on it. I can't remember the name of it now, but that was another really cool one. So they have a lot of great stuff uh, all the time coming out. So keep your eyes peeled for Boker and Boker Plus. Um, also, I interviewed Chaz Fisher. He's the he's the the head of USA Boker. Uh, he was episode three fifty four. Very interesting dude. I met him in the restaurant uh, having breakfast at the at the Blade Show Hotel. So a very cool guy and a and a great interview. Uh, next up. From Artisan, I do like Artisan. They just come up with some really cool stuff, and they have their own proprietary blade steel, which I also, also think is a, is pretty cool. Uh, but they got together with Mike Snowdy. Remember Mike Snowdy? He he was a uh, a big name in the early part of the tactical knife craze, and he had a knife made with Spyderco, a really cool Warncliffe. Uh, and he had, uh, or no, no, that was with Benchmade. He's he's had some knives with Benchmade and some other. Um, American manufacturers along the way. His, this is his first knife with Artisan. And man, it is beautiful. I think this thing is really cool looking. Uh, this, I don't think it has a name. At least it's not uh, named in the article. Uh, but that is a 3.86 inch blade. You know that I like big blades. And that is something that I cannot deny. And right here, that is a harpoon that I cannot deny. You know, I, I say I don't like harpoons. Uh, on blade uh, harpoon swedges, but this one on this drop point just looks phenomenal. Uh, you got a comet shaped opening hole for ambidextrous opening. However, you do not have ambidextrous uh, clip options. That is a, a um, sculpted clip on contoured micarta um, and sort of that pistol grip shape. We've seen that uh, looks kind of cold steely almost with the finger with the four finger groove and the pinky groove and then the double finger well in the middle very cool no release date on this but uh, i do look forward to checking this one out uh, next up ontario uh, knife uh, people who love the rat one and that is pretty much all of us but there are some people uh who love it a lot <laughs> well they came out with a they're coming out with an s35 vn rat and not only are rat one not only are they radically upgrading the steel to S35VN, but they are also upgrading the handle material to G10. So gone is the FRN on this particular model. And uh, here it is at uh, in, in red G10. This, I got to say, it's very appealing to me. Um, I have a very old rat one from the early aughts, eight days and uh, FRN. And that's been living in my car, in my get home bag for years. So I have one, but I, I haven't had one in rotation forever. So who knows? Maybe this $135 MSRP Rat 1 is in my future. Probably not. It will have a street value of $100, though. Um, and I say probably not because though it is a great knife, it does not get my heart beating fast. And I only really have the dough for that these days. Uh, but beautiful. I'm excited to see this. Uh, this knife has long deserved an upgrade. And then lastly, I just want to call your attention to a really cool article I saw on Blade Magazine about uh, classic American, legendary American knife designs. And uh, it was it was interesting because I was like, hmm, 
Bowie knife, yes, and Arkansas toothpick. Like, what else? And and they reminded me of all these innovations and uh, different knife designs uh, to have uh, to have sprouted out. And really, they talk about the Bowie and how American knife design really came out of the. Uh, I love I love that illustration of the Alamo there. That's pretty cool. Uh, but came out of a different famous story about Jim Bowie. Oh, there, I said it about Jim Bowie uh, when he got in a duel uh, and the Natchez, Natchez, oh my God, I'm not pronouncing anything right. The Natchez sandbar, uh, the famous fight where he got shot and stabbed, but ended up disemboweling and nearly decapitating his foe. I, I think that's how it goes. And uh, a lot of knife design cascaded after that. There you see the, uh, the 110 go by, the Buck 110. Uh, folder, the lockback folder, and then you just saw the Spyderco just go by. That was the uh, Spyderco worker. And then they mentioned the, so so the things we get out of that is the Buck 110, we get the we get the, the lockback. You know, that was a big innovation. And then with the Spyderco worker, we're getting the one-handed opening and the pocket clip. Huge innovations there. And then uh, Bill Moran, uh, they mentioned the the contributions of Bill Moran and his uh, Damascus making and his uh, styling ergonomics and handle styles, and uh, then you get the multi tools. You know, you got the you get your uh, your Leatherman, and there we see the the folder flipper, another thing that uh, came out of American knife design: the liner lock, the frame lock, uh, and the Rambo knife. And I got to I got to stop on the Rambo knife here because, A, I think it's beautiful. I love this one. This is uh, you can see on the Rambo knife uh, how it's supposed to how it's utilitarian. It's got that round, hollow handle. It's got the uh, on the inside of the butt cap. It's got the compass and you can fill that handle with survival uh, stuff. But it also has on the quillions. It has a, a, a Phillips screwdriver on the top and a slotted screwdriver on the bottom. Um. The reason I want to talk about the Rambo knife is because I've recently heard uh, in, in relation to some pretty grisly news stories, I've heard this loose talk of it was done with a Rambo knife. And and I think that that's just disgraceful, uh, irresponsible reporting to call something a Rambo knife, to 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 go back 40 years in history and and choose a movie instead of saying a large fixed blade knife. Uh, they call it a Rambo knife. No, they don't. Only you call it a Rambo knife. So let's drop that moniker and just say large fix, large fixed blade knife uh, when when something happens and we start talking about knives in the news. How about that? All right. Uh, for some cool Rambo knives, uh, go check out D-Bad's uh, web page. Um, I just have him on the on the podcast, uh, Donnie B all day uh, this week. And uh, he designs knives that get made to order over there at the Kukri house uh, in Nepal. And he has a bunch of his takes on the Rambo knives. I'm trying to figure out which one I'm going to get a D bad knife, I'm trying to figure out which one I want to get. Cause each one is more badass than the one before it. So I'm going to have to choose wisely. All right. Coming up on the knife junkie podcast, we're going to take a look at uh, two new knives uh, one in prototype and one just fresh to the market, and then 10 great hard work folders. Don't take dull for an answer. It's the Knife Junkie's favorite sign-off phrase, and now you can get that tagline on a variety of merchandise, like a t-shirt, sweatshirt, hoodie, long-sleeve tee, and more, even on coasters, tote bags, a coffee mug, water bottle, and stickers. Let everyone know that you're a Knife Junkie and that you don't take dull for an answer. Get yours at thenifejunkie.com slash dull and shop for all of your Knife Junkies merchandise at thenifejunkie.com slash shop. And now that we're caught up with Knife Life news, let's hear more of the Knife Junkie podcast. This week, I have the great honor of checking out a prototype from my good buddy KC uh, over at the Knives Fast channel. But at this point, to me, more importantly... Tempest Knives. Uh, Tempest Knives is his company, and uh, this is his second knife that's going to go into production. This is the prototype uh, made by Kubi, right? Uh, hang on, sorry. Um, yeah, made by Kubi, uh, and he loaned this to me to check out, make 
cool uh, some videos of, and then I will send it along. And I have actually used it. I left the crap on the blade just to show off. Uh, no, but to let you know that I'm 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 going to fully wholeheartedly endorse this knife, and uh, that comes from cleaning up this this um, cluttered man cave. You know what you see behind you is is a uh, very very neat version of the rest of this room, and uh, boxes accumulate boxes uh, that people send me knives in, and I'm like I'm going to save that because I'm going to send knives out in that box, and I never do. So I had to cut a whole bunch up, and this is what I used. And man, it is an awesome blade. Uh, something I really like about it is that, uh, it's got a very, it's got a nice tall flat grind and it gets really thin and slicey. And, um, I like that it's in contrast to his Tempest pinion. And this is, this is a runner up for, for my great hard work knives folder, uh, list coming up. I love this knife. I got on the pre-order for this and I almost never, ever get on pre-orders for anything. But again, he sent me the prototype for this and I loved it so much. Um, this is a great blade and I love using this. Uh, and then when I got this, I was like, whoa, this is this is an extra special, this is a really nice slicer. Let me just put it that way. Uh, a very nice ergonomics on this. You got this uh, forward choil that your hand fits into. It's not really a choil. I don't know what you'd call it. It's like a space to put your finger. Yeah, that's a choil, Bob. Okay, and, and you can come all the way up here uh, onto that swedge with your thumb. You do have some jimping there uh, if you're going to be back here. I found myself back here because uh, this is not a, a, I mean, to me, you only really, with a knife like this, have your thumb back there if you're, I don't know, making kindling or something. But, but uh, for this, I was powering through um, cardboard, so it was either like that or with my thumb there um, on that jimping. A uh, very nice contoured canvas micarta handle. You've got the really cool proprietary pivot. I love that. And his nice little Tempest logo there. Not uh, not too much in the way of identification. Classy, simple, refined, great action. Uh, obviously, I, I shouldn't say obviously, but on bearings, very nicely uh, executed and really nice action. Fun to play with if that's your thing. And... Uh, Really nice. Okay, so let me tell you the specs of this. Uh, it's going to be in the $80 to $99 price range, but that's to be determined. Uh, these prototypes are in D2 steel, but he's leaning towards 14C28N as the final steel. The pre-order will be open in mid to late January. Uh, let's see. Uh, with delivery hoped to be in early April. Uh, he's hoping for March, but you know, uh, the overall length is seven inches with a four inch handle and a three inch blade and a 2.5 inch cutting edge. Weight is about 3.25 ounces. I'm reading from an email he sent me. Also, now the hardware will be titanium as before and the backspacer is titanium, uh, which is pretty cool. I like the look of that backspacer. The backspacer on the uh, pinion is the same micarta used on the handle, which is actually quite luscious. All right, now there are going to be some changes to this prototype, and he lists them here, four of them. He's going to add a left side clip option with the two slits and the flat screw. So nicely, that screw is flat, so you don't get that doming up into the path of your pocket there, and he's going to add those slits to this side. Uh, you know, fine. Fine if you have to. No, I'm just kidding. Uh, so lefties can have their left clip option, which is very nice. Uh, he's going to add a chamfer across the lock bar here, right here where your thumb engages. Uh, a nice a nice luxury, but totally not necessary as far as I'm concerned, but that'll be a nice little uh, touch. He's going to add a slight amount of lock bar access. So a little bit more here. Also unnecessary in my book, but uh, will be will be nice, I guess. Um, as, actually, as far as I'm concerned, you don't really need that extra lock access if you add that chamfer. Um, anyway, uh, some folks have found the thumb stud a bit sharp, so we are working to smooth the edges out. Oh, poor little snowflakes and their thumbs. I'm just kidding. I love you all. I love all knife people. But yeah, I get it. Actually, I felt it too. Uh, on the thumb stud. Actually, my thumb stud thought was that it was a little too close here. 
Uh, but maybe that is just sharpness that I'm feeling. Uh, really cool that KC um, sends this out uh, as a lot of makers do, designers do, but I love that he has sent them out to me uh, also for my opinion. And that is great for us. It's great for him. We get the knife we want. He gets to make the knife that we want and sell the knife that we want. And uh, uh, all based on his own cool designs. And now I look at this and I think I would never design that knife, but I'm glad that he did. Um, I love, I love I love it. So I'm, I will definitely be getting on this pre-order too. And I guess I will have a little budding collection of Tempest knives. Uh, thank you, Casey, for the honor of checking out this prototype. Okay, next up, the new Jack Wolf knife. Uh, thank you, Ben Belkin, for sending this to me. Um, and uh, in such fine, fine micarta, this natural micarta is... Um, you know, in looking at, they're all, they're all great in looking at all the micarta on that I have on the Jack Wolf knives. This one is the most refined and beautiful. So I'm going to take a moment to look at it. And, uh, when I turn it this way, there we go. That's Ohio, the gray sky and the tan fields in, uh, in winter when I come home to visit. Uh, anyway, I love this thing. This is the Havelina Jack. This is a bare end, um, sow belly, single bladed trapper. Uh, so there you got a beautiful upswept clip point blade. We've seen this style clip point from Ben uh, in the Cyborg Jack and in the Benny's Clip. Uh, we've seen that sort of uh, upward... Um, upward, uh, what did I say? <laughs> Trailing point, a uh, beautiful clip point. You have a long straight there and then a nice belly and an upward uh, trajectory towards that tip. This again is S9DV, like, uh, like the one that came before it. And then you've got the full height hollow grind there. The one that came before it, the low drag jack, uh, was that bullet shaped spear point. That was also an S9DV. Again, super thin grind uh, all the way up to the spine. Deeply, deeply hollow grind. I mean, it's like every time it's getting thinner. I mean, not so thin that you can't do, you know, plow through double walled car uh, cardboard with it, but just so thin. You wouldn't plow through it. You'd slip through it with this knife. Um, I'm very much looking forward to uh, using this as my new food and steak knife. I really like the ergonomics of this handle. Especially, it seems like it lends itself to this kind of cutting, uh, to, to like draw cuts, pull cuts, uh, cutting steak, kind of holding it. And uh, But also in hand like this, man, it is really comfortable. And I got to say here, my only other sow belly is this beautifully done um, Rough Rider. <laughs> Talk about extremes here. This is like a $15 knife, and this is about a $300 knife. Um, or Two two eighty nine, I think. Uh, but this is a, a for a cheap knife or for an inexpensive knife. This is really really well done. But what you don't get out of this is the benefit of the ergonomics. I've been talking about this a lot, and really Ben Belkin and his designs have opened my eyes to this. These knives, these traditional patterns, all have their shapes for reasons, and oftentimes those reasons are ergonomic. But you add an extra blade to the package and then you lose the contour of the ergonomics. So yeah, you can feel the overall curve and you can nestle it in the palm of your hand and that's nice. But this part, you're never gonna get that same feel, that same adherence to your hand as you would in a single bladed knife, single bladed slip joint. You really get the ergonomics. That is one thing I have learned through this Jack Wolf knives, um, uh, <laughs> what do I want to say? The Jack Wolf knives designs, Ben Belkin's um, take on these traditional knives is how ergonomically thoughtful all these designs uh, throughout history have been. And, and just kind of adding the extra utility with the extra blades eliminates some of that. I love this Javelina Jack. I, I am such a yank. I'm such a, uh, that I was like, Javelina, uh, I've heard of that. What is that? Yeah, it's, they're all over the place, I guess, in the, in the South and Southwest. Uh, of the United States. And uh, 
well, Jack Wolf Knives is based in Arizona, and the javelinas are these big agro, you know, uh, wild boar, wild pigs out there. And so he named the sow belly after the javelina, a tough, tough American breed. You know, that's what we like. Tough American breed, just like that Bowie style blade, man. Man, I'm sorry I keep saying man, man. I don't know. I don't know what's up with me, but uh, maybe I'm just excited about this beautiful, beautiful knife. Again, you get a, a downward angle on that straight, which will add to the cutting uh, power of this. All right. Thanks again, Ben, for sending this beautiful, beautiful knife. Of course, it comes in the usual usual package with the, with the unique artwork, uh, the cleaning cloth, the pog, the sticker, and the beautiful um, leather case. So you are getting a lot for your money. And the build of the knife is outstanding. I wish all of my folders had that same build. Okay, speaking of which, uh, let's talk about some well-built knives here. These are great working folders, hard work folders. And I'm saying hard use, hard work instead of hard use. And, and that's because I have done hard work with all of these, meaning um, cutting carpet, doing other things, things that are unpleasant uh, on knives I've, I've used these for. So I want to talk about these knives for a minute, but first I want to mention a couple of runners up. One uh, that I mentioned earlier is the Tempest Pinion. I love this knife, and I do reach for this uh, when I have um, when I've got stuff to cut in here. Usually it happens to be cardboard boxes. Uh, I do have some other kind of crap styrofoam that I've had to cut up and stuff. This thing I pull out a bit. This is another one I pull out a bit. Uh, this is the um, the Cold Steel Kiridashi. It's a great little cheap 4160 Krupp. Oh, no, 4034 stainless steel Krupp. Little utility knife. Uh, great, great knives. And um, but but don't don't quite rise to to the ones I'm about to talk to only because I haven't used them quite as much as the ones that I'm about to bring up. Okay, first up, great hard work folders. The Penguin from QSP. Now, I have a couple of different versions of this. Um, uh, QSP sent me uh, graciously uh, the, the new larger version. Uh, it's, it's called the Penguin Plus, and that's a titanium 20 CV uh, affair, a little bit larger than this. And then they also sent me the small, the micro one, which is also very cool. Uh, but this one is, to me, the most useful because... Uh, well, the 20 CV one is is useful, but it's a little bit bigger. And on the bigger knives, I like a more stabby point. I'll just put it that way. Here you get the great utility of that of that sheep's foot blade that everyone loves from the QSP. But it's just it's it's uh, it's just the right size. This one is very inexpensive. This is a thirty dollar knife. Comes in this really nice uh, denim micarta. I think they were one of the first to do the denim micartas, uh, but you can also get it in a billion other versions. No, I'm sorry. It's only a million. A million other versions, and I think they do a couple of different blade finishes. I'm not sure about that, though. Uh, great, great work knife, great edge, and a great blade geometry. It's pretty. It's, it's somewhat stout, but slicey as hell, and you get a great uh, point down on the bottom, uh, uh, downward oriented point for pull cuts and then it's on this one is on washers feels like it's on on um, bearings next up uh, uh, uh quite on the other side of things a more expensive production knife this is the tr2 from protec and this honestly is the one automatic that i've ever really done work with this one i bought on blade forums from a texas farmer who had used this uh for a couple years uh, during harvest time. And when I got it, it was gritty as hell. You could tell there was all sorts of fine dust in, in here. And it really, it really was used pretty well. But I'm the one who ended up putting the uh, kind of the, the work onto it that you can see. Um, because it came from a farmer who had used it hard in the field, I felt like I could use it hard and I didn't have to um, baby it, which is kind of what I do when I spend a lot of money on a knife. And this was, you know, 200 bucks or whatever I spent on it is still a lot of money on a knife, even though we have more expensive things. Uh, and so I felt licensed to use it. This, you can see the, uh, 
the paint on it. This was a painting knife for a while. This is the uh, was the color or it was one of the colors in my daughter's room before we repainted it a year later or whatever it was. Uh, 154 cm, great action on this. This is probably my most uh, most kicking automatic. Um, Protec is known for their for their hard hitting um, out the side. Uh, knives this one i gotta say though it really takes the cake um, some knives slap open i found my uh, my benchmade automatic slapped open these snap open um, so really really great knife and i also love that aluminum um, shows history very well it shows the snail trails it shows the dings and the history of the knife so Great little knife at three and a quarter inches, a little bit smaller than I usually love, but man, I love that knife. Uh, next up, this one's gotten a lot of action because this one, you know, I, I got the Spyderco paramilitary too, because I, I was taken in by the hype a long time ago when, it, when they first started getting a lot of hype from a lot of people and the hype obviously is well-deserved. I'm not saying it's not, uh, but I didn't get it because I was like, man, that's a beautiful knife and I need it because it's great utility. I got it because I wanted to have it because everyone else did. I hate to put it that way, but let's be honest. Um, and in doing so, I got it and I kind of like, oh, you're, you know, you're really great and you feel really great, but I think you're kind of ugly. So I'm just going to use you, um, you know, and maybe someday I'll get rid of you. and. Um, and in in having that attitude, I've really gone for broke with this knife and done a lot with it. And it really is all of that. It is a great work knife. I have never been able to get the play out of my blade uh, and, and maintain uh, the kind of fidgety action I want. Definitely does not fall shut uh, easily. So a PM2 Whisperer, I'm sure, could take care of this, but that's not what this knife is about. This knife has really become about just loyal service. It started off as like, uh, you know, I'm going to treat you like a work dog uh, or, or a working animal, and uh, and it's really turned into a pet. I love this thing. Um, would I get another PM2? I just don't think so. Uh, but I am on the pre-order for the uh, military too. That is way more my speed. And it will have the things on this knife that I love, like the compression lock and um, and the tip up capability. And it also, oddly enough, in the new version of the military too, uh, will still have S30V. That's so weird. That's so weird to me. They took forever to update the knife and they're not going to update the steel. That, that's so baffling to me. Why not S45 for whatever reason? I don't know. Or just something else. Uh, M4. Wouldn't that be cool? And just still charge like a regular military two price? I don't know. I don't know. Call me crazy. Call me what you will. Next up, a great hard work knife that for a long time was my in the waistband carry uh, when I was out of fixed blades for a while. And that is the uh, Main Street uh, designed by Dirk Pinkerton and produced by Concept. Just a great work knife. Uh, excuse me, has a very nice uh, Warncliffe blade with the thumb ramp and, and Dirk Pinkerton's uh, sort of Signature signature non-jimping jimping, those little cups sort of carved out of the side of the spine. Uh, they're more for indexing, figuring out where you are uh, on the handle. They don't really give you much grip. Uh, but that that tip is at the right angle uh, to give you uh, um, puncturing capability, you know, getting through nasty clamshell or, or hard plastic. Uh, that is really a, a great tip. Great cutting edge. This is 154 cm, one of my favorite blades. A lot of these are in 154 cm, it turns out. It's a great steel to, to cut with. It maintains well. It's easy to get sharp. It keeps a good edge. Uh, it resists uh, corrosion pretty well. Um, this one has a very nice neutral ergonomic handle. Sometimes I appreciate knives better by looking at them upside down. Sometimes you can see the design better because we're less used to seeing them that way. Sculpted titanium clip, 
Uh, I do love this broad, uh, coarse, coarsely woven. Um, oh, what do you call this stuff? Uh, uh, I know you're all yelling it at your at your screens or at your speakers. Um, sackcloth we'll call it for a moment uh, i love this because it's straight sometimes you see uh, micarta like this and you can see the fibers are are bending or or are not straight but these are, it's like the material which i cannot remember the name of um burlap <laughs> is pulled taut and then compressed with the epoxy and i appreciate that man i don't want to see all the wavy wavy lines going through there. I like it like this. So this, this is a very well done, um, handle. The thing that bums me out about this is I had such a nice patina on this, uh, burlap micarta for a while, uh, because I used it a lot and it also uh, was kind of near my body a lot. And then I threw it in my swimsuit one day at the pool. Uh, my swimsuit was wet, you know, uh, but I threw it in the pocket cause I was out of the pool and, and, the pool water totally bleached out the the awesome uh, it also had a really nice feel to it now all of that is gone and um or most of it is gone and you can feel it feels different and it looks different but it's still the same awesome knife now they make this in a small version too uh the main street uh, the mini main street and uh it comes in a great variety of handles and a couple of different blade um options or blade finish options next up this one this is the carpet cutter this one i used uh to cut up yards and yards of carpet when we were redoing my wife's office a couple of years back and uh this is no longer in production i don't think but you can still find it on the secondary uh this is the zero tolerance zero 630 uh this is an emerson design we hear a lot people love the 640 and i love that knife too but uh, the 620 and the 630 that came before them are awesome. Uh, collaboration knives with uh, Ernest Emerson and Zero Tolerance. Just built like uh, built like brick brick houses here. Uh, they are titanium frame locks. Um, I have actually, I've put real Emerson clips on them, but they come with Emerson style clips. They're just glossy and they say ZT on them. Um, just a beautiful one. Uh, s35 vn clip point blade very much in the style of the um cqc8 just a little bit broader or or it also looks a bit like the uh, uh tiger blade the emerson tiger blade uh, but this one man i gotta say oh god you'll have to excuse me from saying man i i, I hate to bring attention to it but it's it's bothering me anyway uh this knife the heat treat on the S35VN is outstanding. And I only know that because, like I said, I, I cut a lot of carpet with this and it was still sharp. It required only stropping afterward. And that was on a homemade strop with no, uh, with just aluminum polish. That's how I was stropping things a few years back. Um, I replaced the very pedestrian G10 black handle scales with the, with this uh, linen micarta handle scale. These were hard to find. I did the same thing on my 0, uh, 0620. I put on uh, some dark green. Those were canvas micarta. They were very hard to find at the time. So I don't know if, if you have one of these, if you'll ever be able to find uh, micarta scales. But if you can, I recommend it because such a great knife were these uh, Emerson knives, but they gave them just really generic G10 handles. So, wah, wah. but really really great and a testament to to zero tolerances manufacturing next up this was a gift to me by bj hill of hilltop uh, edc gears oh man he the gear he does some really cool knife modding he sent this to me um and it was such a nice gift it was kind of out of the blue and um i've used it quite a bit you can see on the on the blade this thing has an incredible blade it is, what is it? It's about an inch and, yeah, it's an inch and a half broad with a full inch and a quarter uh, flat grind. So it's wickedly, wickedly thin and sharp, but big and broad and pointy. It reminds me of a barong, uh, one of the swords that hangs behind me. This handle, I've been back and forth about. Uh, it is very ergonomic, especially when you choke up on the choil here. Uh, and that's how I've used this the most. 
uh, mostly like this, um, cutting cardboard. But back here, this little thing annoys me. And I know your your finger is supp you're supposed to divide your ring finger and your pinky. Um, and I don't like being forced into that box, man. Don't put me in a box. Uh, but I, I can live with it. Really, I use it up here the most. So uh, a very, this is uh, designed by Matt Degnan. And you've got a cool little cucaracha right there on the clip. I say cool little cucaracha, but I got to say, there's nothing worse than cockroaches. They're the, they're the creature that cured me of my arachnophobia. As soon as I started urban living, I was like, spiders, I'll take them all day long. Cockroaches, ooh. All right, next up is the Off-Grid Knives Enforcer XL. And I'm going to include just the Enforcer EDC, which is a, which is probably up more people's alley because it's the same exact knife, really. Same exact knife, uh, but with a three and a quarter inch blade. <clears throat> but for me, this is the one I've used. Uh, this is the big four inch um, uh, XL version. Now this one was my car knife for, I don't know, two years or so. So it got a lot of just random use, uh, everything from opening up packages to, I know I opened up, a, a oil can with that, um, not can, but, uh, you know, just carved out the foil and, you know, did that kind of crappy work, <clears throat> but is capable, of, capable of a lot more. Uh, it's got almost too aggressive of a tech of text. The texture here is almost too aggressive on the G10. If you look at it, it's like it's like a field of pyramids poking up out of the G10. And it gives you outstanding grip. Uh, if you're doing a lot of hard work, you might want gloves or you might just want to knock it down with a little sandpaper, um, especially under the clip. Now, I've not done that because I, actually, I haven't really carried this one. It's It's been mostly in the car. Um, this one I did knock down because I knew I was going to want to carry it. And, um, oh, wait, no, this one came, this one came less aggressive. I'm, t I'm thinking of, I have a special version of this one that I knocked down. But anyway, uh, you got the 154 CM blade steel. This one here on, on this one, uh, on the small, the, the larger one, this is D2. And you can get a special edition of this with, uh, with a red streaked uh, red dawn g10 it's red streaked black g10 and a 154 cm blade anyway very good hard work knife i i guess i could say that about the entire off-grid uh uh catalog uh, but i have done probably the most with this here knife incidental stuff all right next up i'm going to do the a similar thing um this one for me has uh is is emblematic this is the ad10 i mean i'm sorry this is the ad20 from andrew demko and uh, this is a machine ground ad20 meaning it came from uh the the demko shop and it was hand done by the demkos uh but that the blade was ground by a machine uh and not hand ground so uh great great work knife the AD 20.5, though, is the one that I've done more work with, frankly and honestly. Now, I've carried uh, the AD 20 more, uh, but there have been many times where I've just grabbed this to do work with. Now, I I think I may have gotten the shark's foot blade because I think it's ugly. Um, and, well, I had I already had this one. I already had a Demco clip point. But this one, I was like, I should have it just to round out the collection. Uh, but now that I think about it, I think... I got it because I do find it ugly and, and, and that's okay. It is a great working shape. That is a great, uh, blade shape. It's just, I don't know. I, I always flirt with the idea of cutting it somehow or not cutting it, but you know, altering the shape to make it more worn cliffy, but ultimately, um, I'm never going to do that. Uh, this, this, I'm not going to do that, but two great, great work knives. I can definitely speak, uh, to the, the, um, OS 10 a is really great on this. It works really well. This is a Taiwan manufactured AD 20.5. This was from the very first run. Um, you can get these now in a, in a wide variety of handles, uh, whether it's GRN or titanium and different blades. Uh, whether we're talking blade steel or blade finish. So the Andrew Dem, uh, the Demco 
knives 80, 20, or 20.5. This, by the way, is 20 CV. All right. Uh, next up is the Formax Scout by Cold Steel. Um, this thing, uh, you know, is just a monstrous tank and yet only a four inch blade. And, and I say only four inches because when I hold this in hand, it always seems like it's bigger, but look, one, two, three, that's four inches. It, it just seems bigger because of the size of it. Uh, I love that curved handle, uh, there to accommodate, uh, the length of a drop point with the point higher north than south. you got to start curving the handle and it feels really great. You can come back on this knife. You can come all the way back here uh, to the to where your pinky is engaging with the bird's beak at the pommel and make this a chopper. I mean, it's got the weight. It's got the thickness in the blade. Beautifully swedged drop point blade. You don't hear me say that often. Um, but it comes to a nice, nice sharp edge. It is pretty robust behind the edge, but uh, does not, uh, with the thickness being taken into account, it is not some, it's not an obtuse edge at all. Gives you a nice uh, forward choil here if you want to get closer to the blade while you're uh, working with something that requires more dexterity, uh, or you could just be back here in, uh, in this saber, saber grip. Uh, I have also added a fob. I, I added the fob because this was a gift from Jimmy Slash, the great and powerful Josh Bellet. Love that guy. And he sent me this knife as a gift, which was so kind because he was like, you don't have a Formax? And he's got 50 million of them uh, <laughs> in all different. He even has custom. Uh, so he sent me this and I, in honor of him, put one of these fobs on because that's what he does with his knives. Uh, yeah, so this knife has done some hard duty, and that OS 10A really, really stands up to it. Cold Steel is great with their heat treats, uh, even with what a lot of people consider substandard blade steel. Not substandard, but sub-awesome blade steels. Okay, last up, this one has gotten a lot of use and has taken a lot of, has acquired a lot of mileage, literally. This is my... A Microtech SOCOM Elite. This is my road trip knife and has done it all. Uh, no, it hasn't. But it has done a lot of stuff because this is what I always take. This is what is always in my pocket when I am traveling and road tripping, I should say. It all started because it was my first knife with a uh, with the glass breaker on it. But also it's a, another, it's a, a couple of firsts here. This was my first knife with ball bearings and I, I wasn't even aware that there were ball bearings in the pivot when I got it. I just was like, this is intensely smooth. What the heck, man? This is intensely, weirdly smooth. Um, the action of this is oddly, crazily smooth. And I just didn't even think to open it up or, well, I couldn't because of the proprietary uh, hardware, but I didn't think to like do any investigation. But I got to say, this in 2013 was a pretty early ball bearing knife. My first S35 VN bladed steel knife and uh, lots lots of firsts on this. I think this was my first knife with carbon fiber on it. I bought this from a guy in California who was, his story was he was building a house and needed to unload some knives. And uh, he forgot to send the pouch that this comes with. But this thing is just, this is awesome. This has done a, a lot of things. This is cut... Uh, wire and so this has gone through metal as well as the as the as the uh, as the rubber around it it's gone it's cut everything from wire to uh waffles uh, i remember this uh on my road trip to on our road trip to um uh, uh williamsburg virginia i remember using this and thinking i because i had a food knife in mind that i was going to bring and that was what we were going to use every time i had to cut the cut food for anyone uh, my girls were younger then and, um, forgot it. And all I had was this. I'm like, how am I going to cut waffles with, and this did great. It's like this tip was perfect for, uh, engaging with the plate. Uh, but, uh, this thing has, has, uh, has given me confidence and, uh, has, uh, banked up a lot of stories and is capable of a lot of hard work. And if you don't believe it, uh, you can see on, um, on some YouTube channels, uh, 
associated with Microtech. One of the guys that works for them has done some videos on his own channel of doing insanely brutal things with these knives. And they just hold up. Pounding them with a mallet into a two by four, you know, uh, hammering them across nails and all sorts of crazy stuff. These things are awesome. Uh, and I have no doubt the Bravo that I have made by Reich Knives is great, but nothing, nothing will beat the aluminum handled American made Microtech SOCOMs. All righty, ladies and gentlemen, thanks for checking out these 10 great hard work folders. Thanks for uh, letting me talk to you about knives for an hour. You know, you really saved my family uh, from the trauma. And I think this will hold me for at least uh, a few days. So I will talk to you tomorrow on Thursday Night Knives. And uh, we will also be talking soon about uh, about our pre-order. As well as, please do check out uh, the... Uh, the next interview uh, with auxiliary manufacturing, uh, some really, really cool blades there. All right. Also, if you want to become a patron, be sure to go to the knifejunkie.com slash Patreon. For Jim, working his magic behind the switcher, I'm Bob DeMarco saying thank you so much for listening. And until next time, don't take dull for an answer. Thanks for listening to the Knife Junkie Podcast. If you enjoyed the show, please rate and review at reviewthepodcast.com. For show notes for today's episode, additional resources, and to listen to past episodes, visit our website, theknifejunkie.com. You can also watch our latest videos on YouTube at theknifejunkie.com slash YouTube. Check out some great knife photos on theknifejunkie.com slash Instagram, and join our Facebook group at theknifejunkie.com slash Facebook. And if you have a question or comment, email them to Bob at theknifejunkie.com or call our 24-7 listener line at 724-466-4487, and you may hear your comment or question answered on an upcoming episode of the Knife Junkie Podcast. Mm -hmm.